What's up, Pirates? Wraith here with Awaken TCG, and today we're going to be going over the final match of the best of three from this past weekend's Top Cut event in Peoria. So it was an offline regional that I actually attended, and I actually made Top Cut, so I went 8-2 and two my first day. Day 2 in Top Cut, I got my first set out the way, 2 owing my opponent, and then in Top 32, I fell just short. And so I did make a Patreon post on this. Um, basically, it's a tournament report of every match from Day 1 in Swiss, every match in day two in top cut and basically my experience um you know playing in top cut for the first time so if you want you can go check that out in the link below uh but for now let's go ahead and get right into this game here so the finals for this tournament actually ended up being uh whitebeard versus law very very interesting match here uh definitely didn't expect the whitebeard to be in the finals but the law has been you know tearing it up as it ramps up to become the best deck here very shortly in op07 uh, so we have the Nugae going first, playing Anami, passing the Lago second on two Dawn, passes as well. Then we have the Nugae here swinging 6k, leaving three Dawn up. The Law is going to give a 2k. And so this is going to be a very interesting matchup. I'm not too knowledgeable on how this matchup is actually supposed to go, uh, but I feel like Law being at four life, Edward Nugate being at 6k um, base power means that this Law is going to have a very hard time swinging at it. Uh, knowing that all of the bodies that he plays are five cost or five thousand power, I should say, and he has to attach a dawn for them to even swing at the new gate. Um, other than Bon Clay, maybe, although new gate has the five cost Marco, which can you know definitely KO that, as well as the Nico Robin, as they're highlighting here on the stream, they can definitely KO that. Um, and real quick, shout out to um, Eggman. Uh, Go to his YouTube, subscribe to him. He uh, streamed this video on his YouTube and obviously Top Cut. I will link his YouTube down below. You guys can go ahead and check him out as well. Uh, but let's go right back into the match. The Nami actually swings for five, taking the Law's for uh, his first life. And so then, boom, the first card this Law wants to play is this Trafalgar Law, which is insane against Newgate. You know, he gets to randomly choose two cards out of his hand. If he has seven or more, you don minus one, and then you choose two. And they get trashed. So, trash a five cost Marco and a rad beam. So that's honestly not a bad, uh, not a bad trash there. And then he goes five at the Nami. Um, honestly, that's not a bad turn. <laughs> that's not a bad start at all. If he can combo with another law here, it should be game. Honestly, if you get two law effects off, uh, that's four resources, which is honestly very hard to come back from. Uh, so we're going to see how this game actually plays out. Now it is the fresh turn for the new gate on five Dawn. He has a couple of options here. Uh, he can swing six with leader, um, you know, play a, um, a monkey D Luffy swing another six K. Uh, we're seeing here. He's choosing to go with a seven K swing with leader, uh, making it very hard for him to counter out with two cards. Something that uh, red purple law actually struggles with is card draw, right? So that's why they have the raise you in the deck. So, Giving two cards early on for a 7k swing would honestly be a little too harsh. So uh, the law actually takes the life. And then the new gate here going to that sweet spot of three life plays a Marco. And I believe the sweet spot for the Marco is three life uh, for it to be revived. It's a card that can get bot decked anyway. This might just be a bait by the new gate. Swing seven took the life. We got the job done for the turn. Got him one uh, step closer to lethal. Um, and we're going to play a bait character. Um, so we're going to see a kid from the law. I'm not too sure on how much I like this. I think we have to be a little more aggressive um, from my point of view and how I think the matchup goes. Um, so, so he goes kid blocker. He goes aim for the ramp um, and he passes turn. Um, I think that has to be a misplay. Like there's no other way that he doesn't just attach one to leader and swing for 6k there. Um, that has to be a misplay. I mean, sometimes, you know, I will say as someone that's topped online multiple times, um, it's a lot easier playing from the comfort of your own home. Obviously there's outside factors that can, uh, really destroy someone's experience on an online tournament, such as cheating, uh, things of that nature, but offline is a different beast. You have to really get used to playing offline in order to, you know, play to your fullest potential. My first couple offline tournaments, I definitely didn't do as good as I thought and as good as I knew I was. Um, and now more recently, I definitely have picked up the pace. Um, I think my last three tournaments, I went uh, X3 on Uta. Um, I should have been X2, but I, I fumbled. 
And then my last two, it was X2 on Moria. I got top 64 out of Treasure Cup. And then just this tournament here in Peoria, I got top 32, uh, making it to Topka and actually being in my first Topka, which is an amazing experience. Uh, but yeah, here, I think the law has to go 6K at the new gate. Um, I'm not sure why he left one Dawn up. Maybe a Rad Beam. I'm not, I, I haven't looked at his list. Uh, but even if it is for a Rad Beam, I think that's still a misplay. I think it's still too early on. You have two blockers on the board. I don't know. I, I think that's the wrong decision, especially if he swings six, right? What do you do if the new gate swings six? You're not going to rad beam that. So uh, I feel like leaving one Don up, definitely not the play. Um, that should have been a 6K, get another card out of the new gate's hand. Um, but we're going to see what happens here. The new gate, uh, is he swinging six? All right, has he not? Uh, okay, so it looks like he did swing six. So he swung six. Um, Hasn't played anything. He's on a fresh seven dawn. You know, the law really has to uh, be aware. And so see, that's what I don't like. He he gave a whole blocker for a six K swing. Um, maybe that tells you he doesn't have two Ks, um, which hurts. He definitely didn't want to risk the, risk the kid and give a one K. Uh, which probably should have been the, the the option rather than give the law blocker you you rest the kid you give a 1k whatever swing comes next you just block with the law then right so i mean unless unless you're scared of the ace right um and so here we go you know luffy swing uh eight and he gets the rad beam i still rather prefer to the law to swing at the the new gate early on to get that pressure out. You can go down to one life relatively easy. Um, now you have to deal with this unblockable Luffy. Do you have a Gordon? I don't really like this. Um, I mean, I guess the biggest cards in this matchup come into play from what I um can think off the top of my head is obviously that law that he played early on and then Shariah blocker i think Shariah blocker is probably the 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 most underrated card in this matchup every new gate swing is going to be blocked 1k right i think Shariah is too invaluable i feel like that is something you might have to even mulligan for um so now we have a miss also landing. so this feels like a really really weak turn unfortunately um so we get the ramp in the draw uh, but again, we're you're using five Don to establish a 5k body. So he has the Gordon to, you know, pop the or to bottom deck the Luffy. But it looks like it might be a little too late. Uh, the lot at this point has to be way more aggressive than he's being. And it looks like he's gonna play another Ein to ramp. So, I mean, he hasn't really played anything that's going to warrant the Nougat to get scared, right? Like, you know, there's no... Like, yeah, he's getting these ramps off, but at the end of the day, you know, you have to have a board that's, you know, actually going to do damage and be aggressive early on, right? He's swinging 6k here at the new gate on his, what, uh, what was he at? Uh, six Dawn. This is like a free turn for the new gate. Nothing really got established. Two, two 5,000 power bodies. The new gate is not scared of that at all. Obviously, both of these players are in the finals for a reason. Um, but from what I can see, I think the law is just being a little too, a little too defensive when he needs to be a little more aggressive. Um, I think an, like that Marcos has just been sitting there, right? Um, the kid has just been sitting there. Um, the iron has been sent. So everything, everything the law has played has just honestly been sitting there. Um, and I feel like this is just a stalemate. But at the end of the day, the new gate's going to have 15 cards in hand. The law, if you don't see a Raju, you're going to have like three cards in hand. Um, so I don't like what I'm seeing so far. I mean, maybe maybe this is just his draw, right? Maybe this is just his draw and he doesn't have any other options, which potentially could be the reason why he's playing it like this. Um, and so he gets swing. He swings seven and he's going to take a life. Uh, the new gate is still available here. Um, I, I, I don't think he can afford to go to zero. He might have to give up the kid blocker here, which is going to be real bad so he blocks and gives it 2k and that's a misplay
yeah so i mean at this level i it, it really sucks to be seeing misplays like this he just played the ace um so that kid is actually at 3k and so that Sanji's making him go to five. So he needs an additional 3k, which is an additional two cards to save this kid now. Um, and he just gives it up with a 2k. So it's real frustrating me as a competitor seeing a misplay like that at the highest level. Um, but it's understandable. A lot of the times, you know, pressure is a factor when you're playing in games like this. Um, but this law already having such a bad draw is, is what I'll say, just the way he's playing it. Um, and then making a misplay like that, I think that's going to seal it. I haven't watched the finals. I know who wins, obviously, but like from just watching this match so far, I think that's going to seal it. Um, I mean, things like that is, is what's going to separate you from the rest, right? Um, all day in Swiss, I made about two mistakes and one of those games where I made those mistakes in costed me the match. Um, besides that, I played you know, pretty on point and was able to go X2 day one, uh, day two in top cut. The first game I played, uh, to perfection. The second game I did make some more misplays. Um, and the majority were after a break. So we had signups for the new events in the middle of top cut. They paused the timer. They let us sign up for the events. And then we came back, but everybody was talking. We were like, so distracted. And then it's like, okay, now go back into serious mode. And so I definitely made a misplay right after that. Um, the break definitely iced me out. I was, you know, clawing my way back into the match and then I fumbled my leader ability. Um, but let's go ahead and get back onto the topic. We have a, uh, a queen being played here. Uh, we have a Marco getting swung at with Ain, and he's just going to go ahead and leave it. Uh, mm, I'm not sure what I'm, I I'm gonna be honest. I don't think. Okay. That's fine. A fire fist to get get rid of it. Bottom decking it. This is fine. This is fine. Um, and he plays a bon clay. Bon clay. It's it's so it's so volatile. The bon clay can be really good. Um, if the newgate has something on board, but right now he doesn't. And if this new gate has a five cost Marco, it pops a 3000 power or less unit. He can just play that and swing momentum. And he played a rad beam. He played a rad beam uh, for the seven K swing, um, which he could have just used a two K. Um, maybe he's trying to bait his opponent there, but uh, from the looks of it, that that law doesn't have too many cards in hand, maybe four three or four let's see if we can see it right now for a second but the new gate here is thinking that the new gate is definitely trying to get into a winning position here there's one blocker on the board um one life on the law i mean the new gate has a, a ton in hand right so the new gate has way more than enough and i think here the play honestly if you have the five cost marco you just do it you're at 10 dawn you go five cost pop the bond clay you know that's not going to be a usable character you don't really care about the other 5k bodies on board because they're just swinging 6k and you can just pitch a one or pitch a two right and when you have you know 10 cards in hand it's easy to give those up um he's looking through his trash there and i mean honestly we're coming to the end uh newgate is really a faster pace deck especially because they put themselves down in life every single turn uh, it tends to end the games faster because your opponent is on a clock as well because you know you're getting swung at 6k every time and you have to attach a dawn to swing 6k back to the new gate so um these matchups are usually very volatile uh they always you know go to turn five turn six game's about to be over um so it's gonna be interesting to see here exactly what um the new gate does from my perspective if i have the five cost marco here it's going to be a good body for next turn to go for lethal and the bon the bon clay gets popped, which is a, a unit that actually is very scary, uh, especially if like you were to do a new gate turn here. If you go new gate, now the bon clay is just, you know, a crazy 10 K body for Ford on, which is very scary. So definitely not a new gate turn. I, I would definitely advise against that. Um, that just puts too much pressure on yourself. Um, I think a five cost Marco here would be amazing. Um, and then maybe like a big swing with leader 
and then leave some down up for some uh, for some events is probably what I would do. So let's go ahead and wait and see what this new gate actually does. So he's counting up his done. Yeah, you got 10, buddy. So let's see here. OK, so he's going to swing 8K. He's swinging 8K at lead. Um, this is very OK. So he has two twos in hand. He blocks it out. Obviously, the Luffy would be very scary in the following turn. One, two, three, four, five. Yes, seven down left. Um, oh, we do. We see he does have the five cost Marco and a guard point in hand. Oh, no, that's his trash. Yeah, he used that guard point. So let's see. He's still thinking about his turn. Let's see if we can speed it up a bit. So he plays the Ezo. Um, what does he grab off the Ezo? Oh, he whiffs. Oh, man, he whiffs off the Ezo. Okay, so that's not as bad as the misplay the law made. Or That's not even a misplay. What am I saying? That's just, you know, that's just a bad beat. You know, you play the Ezo, try to search for something. You don't find it. You know, you just got to chalk it up. Uh, sometimes that happens. Uh, that's not even a misplay. Uh, two Dawn up here. And this is a very interesting turn here. Um, okay, so if I'm the law here, oh, so the law has one card in hand? I wonder what card he drew there. This doesn't look good. That If, that, if there is one card in that law's hand, it does not look good. It does not look good at all. Because the new gate I see is hovering over there, six, seven cards. I don't know, like eight, nine cards. Um, so he's going to swing six. Gives him a 1K. Um, and see, this is what I meant about he, the, the lot being ha having to be a little more aggressive earlier on. He's barely swinging with these units 6K. Because he ke kept trying to develop a body, pop something, develop a body. Um, I think that's the wrong way to play it. I think, honestly, that's the wrong way to play it. Four, five, six, seven. I believe that the law has to go for it now. I mean, you just die next turn, right? Even if you leave the queen blocker up, the Marco's still on board. Um, I mean, technically, the new gate would have to have a rush. And so he has the rad beam there <laughs> to go to 10k. Um, and that should be game, honestly. I with one card in hand, uh, even with the rad beam, I think that's game over. The Newgate can just split Dawn. He has no blocker, and that should you know seal the deal. Uh, so okay, so he's in a Dawn minus. Pop the Ezo. Does he have a kid and killer here? Maybe go for one more swing for seven K. Uh, it doesn't look like it. So he passes turn, and that should honestly be it. Um, I think this is actually the last turn. The new gate ends up winning the tournament. Very unfortunate for NA. We don't like to see a new gate winning the tournament. Um, I actually lost to a new gate in Swiss. Um, I made a misplay. Um, I didn't. I didn't check his hand. I should have checked his hand. I had like three swings to check with his hand. I could have gone six K swing life, six K swing per game. You know, checked his hand. I would have realized eventually after the second swing that he was bricked, um, which would have led me to go for game. But that didn't end up happening. Uh, what had happened was I go for his board. He starts letting his board die. And then I clear the the uh, the unblockable Luffy because I'm at zero life. I play a blocker. You know, he has uh, four in hand. I'm hoping, okay, I've cleared two blocker Luffy's. He doesn't have another one. And, of course, he did. He said he got it off his last life, uh, which is very unfortunate for me. But that is going to be the end of this video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate you guys. Obviously, I'm back home now making this video. Uh, but yeah, Peoria was an insane event. I did get into the Peoria in August, so I will see you guys there again. Uh, such an amazing event. It was very wonderful. But make sure to like this video, comment down below, subscribe to our channel, and subscribe to my Patreon if you want to see that tournament report article. I think it's pretty good, uh, you know, but I'm biased. Anyways, I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.